We gather this hour. We gather this hour. We gather this hour. We gather this hour as people of faith. As people of faith. As people of faith. As people of faith. With joys and sorrows. With joys and sorrows. With joys and sorrows. Gifts and needs. Gifts and needs. Gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope. We light this beacon of hope. We light this beacon of hope. Sign of our quest for truth and meaning. Sign of our quest for truth and meaning. In celebration. In celebration. In celebration. Of the life we share together. 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 We share together. We share together. We share together. Yes. If you know me personally at all, you'll know that both parenting and gardening are important to me. My kids are getting to be pretty well grown now. Um, so they're not little. My youngest two are 16 and the next older is 19 and the oldest is almost as old as my garden since we moved to this house a few months before he was born, almost exactly 24 years ago. These two things, parenting and gardening, are linked together for me. I started my garden with children in mind, fenced the yard, made room to play, gave each of my kids space to grow their own plants, and gardening has become my main metaphor for parenting too. On the surface, as certainly both parenting and gardening look kind of similar. We are careful and protective of the young seedlings. We move things out of the way of their growth as they get more sturdy. We try to prune away parts that are growing in difficult directions. We treat infestations and infections. We feed, nurture, water, rearrange conditions, or transplant them if things are not thriving where they are. It can be very pretty on the surface and also represents some hard work and sometimes heartbreak and loss and misunderstandings and more learning. So I have been tending this garden for 24 years this month. Mm. Well, actually, not really. I've been planting and weeding and watering and fertilizing the garden for 24 years. And I've been tending my garden for probably the last 10. And I mean that very particularly, tending the garden. The word itself, tending, comes from the same root as attending. It means to listen, to focus our attention on something without distraction, and then respond to what we learn. And so in that sense, I have really only been tending my garden for a decade. When I started out, I didn't listen. I put plants where I wanted them to be because they'd be pretty there. I mean, we, <laughs> I looked at the water and the sunlight needs before I planted them. I did read the label, mostly. But I put them where they were supposed to be, and I gave them what they were supposed to need. And some thrived, and others just weren't okay there. Sometimes I was really stubborn with that, and I tried to fix the plant's needs with more of something. And that didn't always work either. I had to dig up the shade loving ferns and move them because I had planted them in full sun. They didn't thrive where I had put them. 
I just had figured that they would look pretty there and they would do what I wanted them to do instead of what they did best. Sometimes humans can be a little stubborn and it's definitely a trait for me. But if you argue with biology, you're not gonna win. <laughs> It took me a long time to learn that tending the garden was about listening. Listening to my plants, listening to the soil, listening and responding and listening again. Maybe that's why gardeners talk to plants because we're actually having a conversation with them across time. They tell us when they're unhappy and they tell us when they're thriving. And we converse with them back in words and actions, trying to make things right or at least better on our best days. And many of us get frustrated with how things are going when something isn't thriving or blooming as expected despite our best efforts. I feel that one for sure. If we have listened and spoken over time in this long conversation, we end up not just caretakers of a plot of land and some plants. We end up in relationship with the earth and the ecosystem in which our garden exists. And the tending we do ends up being a way of tending ourselves. We embed ourselves in the interdependent web of all life inextricable. If we take ourselves into relationship with children, however we're related, and we listen, the same thing happens. We learn to provide what is needed, not just what we want them to need. And we learn to respond to who the child is rather than trying to prune them into something that they're not. On our better days, we tend them and tending them just like a garden tends us back. And life isn't all good weather and peak bloom season. And it's not even resting through the winter all the time. It's also late freezes and unexpected storms and climate change making a seesaw of conditions that stress the plants and stress out the gardeners. Real life in the garden includes blight and frost and realizing that the neighborhood groundhog has eaten every single leaf off that plant and now it's just bare stems. And there are also the terrible mistakes. Flowering vines that I was told would be beautiful are beautiful and also invading every corner of every area of my yard and cutting off light to other plants. I have to pull them out again and again. I have overwatered, waited too long to respond to a blight. Gardeners learn to live with our mistakes, the, mis the things that we have done that cannot be undone. Tending a garden can break our hearts, can make us weep and rage against things outside of our control and against our own flaws and errors. Which brings me back to parenting again, especially now, especially in a pandemic. This isn't the best season or the best year of seasons for many of us. Some people get more time to do the things they always dreamed of. But many of us are just trying to do all the things for us and also everything that our community helped us with before, this time by ourselves. The weather has changed and it keeps changing. And we don't know whether it's okay to put the seedlings out yet. 
Do we trust that it's safe enough? Safe enough for whom? Which things can get planted? Which actions can we take and trust? Like gardening, we're working with imperfect knowledge against an unknown future, only with much, much higher stakes. So here we are, second Mother's Day in a pandemic, second Amma's Day, second attending day, whatever you want to call it. In difficult seasons and difficult years, it's not just the garden that needs tending. It's the gardeners too. On this day, we're all asked to be the gardeners for at least this day to tend to the ones who tended us, no matter what we name them, no matter what their gender or relationship. And that means even ourselves as we have tended our own growth. This is the time to notice the ones who have listened. This is the time to look for the ones who took the time to understand what we need to thrive. This is the time to seek out the ones who were patient with our natural form, who sustained us as we grew into ourselves and didn't try to make us be what we were not. This is the time to nurture those features in ourselves as well. So today, happy Mother's Day, or happy Amma's Day, or just happy today. May we all be good gardeners for ourselves and each other. Tend well, my friends, and blessed be. <laughs>